Hello and welcome back. We are going to be kicking off Chapter 5 of Aerodynamics 2. And once again, today we are going to be taking those foundational principles that we built in Aero 1 and then uh, capitalize on those as we start introducing some new principles. So Aero 1, we talked about spins, or excuse me, we talked about stalls. Today we're going to be going one step further now introducing spins uh, into uh, the curriculum here. So hang on, uh, it's going to be a great ride and we're going to be talking about some fun things. As with every chapter that we talk about here in API, we are going to be first telling you exactly how this chapter is going to be broken down. So uh, first and foremost, we're going to be discussing the objectives associated with Chapter 5. Those objectives, both terminal and enabling, are where we find those test questions from. So uh, pay, pay particular attention to uh, the beginning of those chapters in your text and follow along. That way you can uh, more effectively understand where uh, you need to be studying in order to pass these exams and become a much more capable aviator or NFO. So uh, once we cover the objectives we'll go uh, jumping into spin developments. After spin development we'll get into the aerodynamics around what a spin is. And then lastly, we're going to be discussing and seeing what some of those indications are inside the cockpit of a T6. And then lastly, if you're going to get into a spin, you might want to know how to recover from that spin. So we're going to be discussing some NATOPS procedures associated with uh, effective ways to get out of a spin, and then also looking at some ways to uh, not so effectively get out of a spin. Some of those will help, some of those will not. So... Terminal objectives for aerodynamics units are, from the aerodynamics perspective, describe normal flight operations and describe emergency flight operations. Normal flight operations, you're on that cross-country flight going from point A to point B. Everything's going really wonderful until things don't go wonderful. And that bird that you least expected comes crashing through your cockpit. Maybe that engine starts giving some uh, indications that it's not operating at its uh, normal capability. And then you get into that emergency flight operations where you as the pilot need to be able to take control of that aircraft, need to ex exercise those emergency procedures to bring your aircraft crew safely back home. Take a look in the beginning of Chapter 1, 2-TAC, 5-TAC 1 for the Aerodynamics Training Guide and you can see where your enabling learning objectives are going to be coming from. Alright, spin development. What is the definition of a spin? Well, we can see real clearly right here that a spin is an aggravated stall that results in auto rotation. Auto rotation is that combination of roll but you also have a yaw that is self-sustaining. So I've got that angle bank in there, and I've also got a yaw which just causes a self-sustaining autorotation uh, that's aggravated. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Two requirements. Two requirements for a spin to occur. I need to have a stall, which means that I have to have an angle of attack that is greater than CL max AOA, but in combination with that, I also have to induce a yaw. So a stall and a yaw are what are going to equal spin. As that self-propagated, aggravated spin is occurring, it's going to be rotating around what's known as a spin axis, that aerodynamic point around which the stall and the yaw forces act to sustain spin rotation. As you can see in the middle graph there, or the middle picture, that turn needle on the bottom portion is going to be always deflected in the direction of the rotation. The balance ball associated with that is going to be slid out to the right. On the graphic on the left there we can see that the AOA associated with this particular aircraft is at 18 units and therefore it's, it's a stalled AOA. And then we're spinning in that left turn on that graphic on the right 
T6 spinning around that spin axis. So what causes this self-propagated roll and yaw? Okay. During a stall, yaw creates an angle of attack difference between the two wings. With that angle of attack difference between the two wings, I'm going to get unbalanced lift and drag on both the upgoing wing and then therefore the downgoing wing. Am I seizing to create lift on the upgoing and the downgoing wing? No, I'm not. And that is one of the big misconceptions that people might have. They think, oh, my aircraft is stalled, therefore I'm not producing any lift on both of my wings. I'm here to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, that your aircraft, even though it's stalled, is still producing lift. And we can see that on this little graph here on the right, showing both coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag on the same plane. With that upgoing wing, we can see that little orange dotted line going vertically. As it passes through the coefficient of lift, we can see that it's slightly right to where CL max AOA is. Or we could say that it's at an angle of attack greater than CL max AOA of 18 units, and therefore it's probably on that picture about 19 units AOA. Whereas that downgoing wing, as I start traveling down, still in the stalled region, I'm at a greater angle of attack, but look at what the coefficient of lift corresponding to that greater angle of attack is. Most people always think, oh, I'm at a greater angle of attack, therefore I'm probably creating more lift. The only caveat to that is, once I pass that CL max AOA, I cease to create more coefficient of lift as I increase that angle of attack. So therefore, in that stalled region, a greater angle of attack correlates to less coefficient of lift, but it also correlates to more coefficient of drag. It's that difference in between those upgoing and the downgoing wing with respect to the amount of the coefficient of lift and the amount of coefficient of drag which causes that auto rotation in the spin. It's a self-propagating roll and yaw due to the asymmetrically stalled wings. Unbelievable. A couple different sources of where this yaw can occur from. Believe it or not, when you get to primary, whether it is you're in corpus, whether you're up at NAS Whiting Field, you will be putting an aircraft intentionally into a spin. Might seem crazy, but if you think about it, it's actually quite beneficial. How beneficial would it be to try to recover from a spin if you've never actually put yourself into a spin? Hmm, it's incredible. So we want to try to practice that in as much of a controlled environment as we can. So with that, we get pilot induced sources of yaw, intentional, planned entries, such as you're going to be doing up at Whiting or Corpus, basically primary. And then the other one is training for when those unintentional times come in. Misapplication of controls out of trim condition flight, pushing the envelope, writing checks that your body can't cash, whatever the case might be. Non-pilot induced sources of yaw, wake turbulence, and fuel and aircraft balance issues. Here's an amazing video of what you could have the potential of doing. Actually going on into test pilot school and putting an effort
Slide 12, unbalanced coefficient of lift. Outside wing has a lower AOA. It's still stalled. Therefore, the lower AOA and stall region means more lift for the outside wing. Therefore, we get asymmetric lift. It's this unbalanced coefficient of lift as well as the unbalanced coefficient of drag that creates asymmetric lift and drag, which therefore creates a self-propagating spin as we enter into that maneuver. Outside wing is lower AOA, it's still stalled. Lower AOA means less drag for the outside wing. Since the outside wing has more lift and less drag than the inside wing, the rotation is self-sustaining. Hopefully you can also read that on the slide. Characteristics of erect, inverted, and flat spins. Rec spin is going to be entered from positive G stall. Attitude injury is not a factor and characterized by nose down upright attitude. With some positive G's on that, your butt is going to be sunk down into the seat. Inverted spin entered from negative G stall with a yawn introduced. Attitude entry is once again not a factor and characterized by nose down inverted attitude with some negative G's. You're going to be hanging in your harness. Taking a look at this, that is not a T6. That's a T34 spinning down to the ground and crashing to its death. However, that's a T. 34. T6 is not subjected to flat spins, however you always want to know what to be able to do. Why? Because a flat spin is not supposed to happen in a T6, but then again, the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were not supposed to be breeding either. Spin aerodynamics, just like a figure skater over at the Olympics, factors that are going to be affecting that spin. Conservation of angular momentum, lower pitch rate results in a higher rotation rate, and then some acceleration factor in there, taking into account how far that angle is between the spin rotation axis and the center of gravity. Higher rotation rate results in larger forces that are needed in order to oppose that nose down movement. Pitch and rotation rate, steeper pitch and increased rotation rate can occur due to a couple different things. Here they are. Pitch attitude at spin entry, control inputs, aircraft weight, and then therefore spin direction. Pitch attitude effects on spin. If I got a lower pitch attitude, I'm going to have a higher stall speed, faster entry, more oscillations. With a higher pitch attitude, I'm going to have slower stall speed. 
slower entry and fewer oscillations. Aileron effects. Aileron is normally set to neutral for spin recovery. Aileron deflection, if I deflect it in the direction of the spin, it's going to increase my roll and yaw oscillations. If I do it opposite, it's going to dampen those. Rudder has some effects also, so dramatic effect on the spin and spin recovery. Therefore, I'm going to make sure I'm putting my rudders neutral. If I put them in the opposite direction, it'll help dampen it out. If I put them in the same direction, it's going to help accept. Rudder effect on spin, got a vertical drag component, creates more nose down force. Horizontal drag component decreases rotation rate. Both components maximize for anti-spin recovery. Pro spin rudder minimizes resistance to relative wind. Primary effect, nose will pitch up. Smaller vertical component of drag acting on the tail. Therefore, secondary effect is going to be rotation slows initially. As horizontal drag decreases, rotation increases. Elevator effects on spin. Elevator horizontal stabilizer creates more uh, creates little lift and great amount of drag in the spin. That vertical drag creates a nose down force. Nose down force increases the rotation rate. That rotation rate minimized with full up elevator. Full aft sticks results in the flattest pitch attitude and therefore slow spin rate, therefore unaccelerated uh, spin. Any stick position other than full aft will result in a steeper pitch attitude and increased in rotation rate. It's referred to as an accelerated spin. Here are the three attributes that are going to be preventing your T6 from entering into a flat spin. Ventral fin, dorsal fin, and two strikes. Effects of gross weight on spin, a lighter aircraft is going to have a faster spin entry, increased oscillations, and a faster recovery, where a heavier aircraft is going to be the opposite. Slower spin entry, reduced oscillations, and slower spin. Spin direction, gyroscopic precession is that phenomenon that occurs when a gyroscopic gyroscope experiences a force. Gyroscopic uh, is a mass reacts to a disturbance along the rotation axis at a point 90 degrees further in the rotation cycle in the direction of turn. The propeller of the T6 is clockwise rotating gyroscopic, and therefore it's going to prevent certain things from happening. Some spin indications that we're going to be seeing, okay, for a an erect spin. AOA is going to be pegged. Air speed is going to be about 120, stabilized in there. Spin direction is going to be in the direction of the turn needle, and our balance ball is going to be on the opposite way. Altitude is going to be severely decreasing, as well as our VSI, somewhere around six to 9,000 feet per minute. Inverted is going to be slightly crazier. However, we're still going to have uh, stalled aircraft. The AOA is going to be reading zero. Airspeed is going to be stabilized around 40. Turn needle, bounce ball are still going to be in the same position as an erect spin. Altitude, can you guess? Altitude is going to be severely decreasing as you race towards the Earth. VSI is going to be same thing, about six to 9,000 feet per minute. <laughs>
3,000. He'll never have the turn, dog. He'll never hack it. Atta boy. Atta boy. See, that's all you need to do is put his nose off. He's lagging. Yeah. Easy there, big fella. Come on, Marcus. Neutralize, neutralize, dog. Neutralize. 15,000 feet, dog. Lock my harness. 15,000 feet, dog. Check. Engines, engines are... 14,000 feet, dog. Engines are... Check into rudder out. Rudder's opposite. Rudder's out. Rudder's right. Six is coming into. No air speed, dog. No air speed. Roger. 11,000 feet. Tag. Fuck. 10,000 feet, dog. Oh, son of a bitch. How about them apples? Good engines.